day, everybody. It's Brian Tarian here with Curl, our resident disability approval expert. Thank you for joining us today, Curl. Thanks, Brian. Yes. So we're going <laughs> to talk today about uh, arthritis, um, different types of arthritis, how it, it applies to the disability approval process. And I have Curl with us here today because of your background and what you've done here at the Disability Digest. So if you would tell those that are out there in Disability Digest land a little bit about your background, Curl, that would be awesome. Sure. Um, so yeah, my name is Carol and I'm a registered nurse. I've been exposed to different fields of clinical practice, including the emergency room, the operating room, ICU, labor room, psychiatric ward, community nursing, and hospice care. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe that the best skill that I have for me is the experience and the exposure to other fields of healthcare. So um, providing appropriate care with empathy and interventions for our clients who are suffering from their different illnesses. Mm -hmm. Great. And here at the Disability Digest for the last five plus years, Curl has been working with our members, bringing them through the disability approval process. So from the point that they start taking their information, successfully putting it into the dis disability system, teaching people how to fill out the forms, what to say and do, get evidence, doctor support, monitor the case, and has got remarkable results. So you have your experience as a nurse, what you've done here, we're gonna tie it together today uh, relative to arthritis. So thank you for your contribution here, Carol, for getting members approved. Um, all right, so for today's conversation, uh, what I'd like to learn about is the different types of arthritis. Uh, and then also how it ties into the disability approval process. And before we get into that, here's why I feel this is super important. Arthritis at some of the low levels can be like significantly limiting, limiting right? Yeah. Uh, preventing people to work, but they could be visually like look okay, right? Or fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, then, so, so the key is getting the evidence uh, required. So um, mm -hmm. I have a presentation up on my screen that we will go through for those of you that are out there watching this. If you're looking mm -hmm. away from your phone or your computer, you can come back and join us and we're gonna go through the different types of arthritis to start with. All right, Carl. All right. So there are four types of arthritis. So we have um, namely osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and gout. So let's start with osteoarthritis. So this is the most common form of arthritis. So some people call it the degenerative joint disease. So this is um, also called the wear and tear arthritis. Mm -hmm. So this occurs most frequently in the hands, hips, and knees. So with osteoarthritis, the cartilage within a joint begins to break down and the underlying bones begin to change. And another type of arthritis is the rheumatoid arthritis. So this is um, an autoimmune and inflammatory disease, So which means that your immune systems system, sorry, attacks healthy cells in your body by mistake. So causing inflammation or swelling in the affected parts of the body. So this mainly attacks the joints. So usually many joints at once. And we have the psoriatic arthritis. So this is the type of arthritis that affects some people with a skin condition, psoriasis. So it typically causes affected joints to become swollen, stiff, and painful. So like psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis is a long-term condition that can prog progressively worsen over time. Mm -hmm. And the last type of arthritis, we have gout. So this is the common form of inflammatory arthritis. So usually this is being um, when you have increased uric acid. So this can trigger 
um, gout. And so sometimes um, when the symptoms get worse, um, these are known as flares. And times when there are no symptoms, so this means that the client is under emission. So most of the time, um, this is only triggered by the uric acid. So food intake, um, usually um, male, obese, alcohol intake, and the use of diuretics. Okay. So lifestyle is a contributor to gout. Sounds like. Yeah, correct. Right. And it sounds like for osteo, um, manual labor, like somebody who's maybe done contracting work or building or mm. nurses or other people that have had continual like demands on their body. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have the four different types. Now <clears throat> let's move on and talk about the, you know, the qualification process for arthritis. Like, uh, and for those of you that are listening out there, you know, two people can have gout or osteo, but my hunch is what you're going to learn is there's certain triggers uh, that will indicate the degree of severity so that it applies. So anxious to learn yeah. about this girl. Yeah. So um, the type, um, usually the questions for our clients is what type of arthritis qualify for um, SSDI? So you may automatically qualify for benefits if your arthritis is affecting your spine and compromising any nerve roots within the spinal cord. So arthritis should cause your spinal cord to experience widespread pain, limited flexibility, inflammation that necessitates a change in positioning every few hours. So this is um, osteoarthritis. So um, Social Security also recognizes inflammatory arthritis um, as a disabling disease. So it is accompanied by the following findings the deformity or the swelling of your ankle, your knee, your hip. So at least two of the following symptoms would also be, you would always experience this um, fever, loss of weight, fatigue, or general mm -hmm. feeling of discomfort. So this is under rheumatoid arthritis. And as I've mentioned earlier, this is an autoimmune disorder or disease. Okay. So deformity. So if you have um, you know, uh, ankle, knee, or hip, uh, deformity could be swollen, right? What other mm -hmm. kind of, what other kinds of deformities might there be? Do you know? Um, usually the deformity is in your, um, in the parts of your hand. Your oh, hips. right. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, so the, yeah. when there's weakness or tearing of a ligament due to an inflammation, mm -hmm. so this results in laxity of the middle finger and the flexion of the distal joint. Um, so this is the distal joint. Um, so they would have like, mostly their hands would be folded and they, there wouldn't be flexion. They can't, they can't yeah. open it. And we call that the swan neck deformity. Okay, great. Good to know. Moving on, how to qualify, right? Yeah, so for applicants of SSDI benefits, um, how to qualify for SSDI with arthritis. So first, um, determine if you can work. So in most severe cases, you won't be able to lift objects due to pain and deformity caused by arthritis. So so yeah, we would check the work history for this part. And we also have RFC or what we call as the residual functional capacity forms. Mm -hmm. So your doctors will confirm and advise Social Security Administration that you are unable to do work because of the diagnosis and the severity of your arthritis. Mm -hmm. Number three, um, also how to determine if your arthritis meets the medical criteria. So this will be supported by x-rays, increased medication of pain. Um, Social Security would advise you to take a consultative examination. So they would check that or the physical examination. Sorry. And um, they would also check um, if you have undergone lab tests. So there is um, if it's 
uh, if you're a rheumatoid factor, so this will be this would indicate if you have um, rheumatoid arthritis, and if it's above normal, so usually it's zero to twenty units per milliliter of blood, and above that would um, confirm that you have rheumatoid arthritis. So um, another one is, um, as I've mentioned earlier, also um, analyzing your past work. So completing the work history forms or what we call the 3369. Mm -hmm. And in there, we will communicate how heavy you've lifted and how gainful, um, what type of gainful activity you've been doing in your past work. So for so, example, okay. if somebody has a lifting requirement on a job of 20 pounds or more, but their doctor completes the residual functional capacity report saying that they can only lift eight, right? They would not be able to do that type of work. Is that my, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. Okay, great, great. Um, is there anything else down here? I see you have some notes about labs and all that. And for those of you that are um, watching this, there will be a link or information around this video um, with what we've gone through here. But um, I see you have some other references here. Is there anything else to note for? Uh... Um, yeah, um, this is just regarding the rheumatoid factor. So um, the lab test for um, your rheumatoid arthritis, as I've mentioned, earlier, um, this is an autoimmune disease. So it mm -hmm. also affects other parts of the systems. So once you have rheumatoid arthritis, um, this would mean other condition might also be included such as long term infection, bacteria endocarditis. This is when um, the rheumatoid factor is above the, the normal range. You may okay. also, this may also be, um, indicate that you have cancer, diabetes, lupus, dermatomyositis, um, infectious of mononucleosis, leukemia, sclerodermia, and Georgian's syndrome. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay, great, great. Well, this has been excellent. Um, for those of you that have been watching this uh depends on where you're at maybe you're not a member here at the Di disability digest watching this on youtube here's how you can get some additional assistance um is look for a link around the video if you're not a member or haven't we haven't heard from you in a while you can join us as a member or update us as a member complete a profile and then you can get access to other information like this to help you get your disability benefits approved fast, hopefully, right? Um, or if you're already a member and you haven't been in contact with your advocate yet, you can use the communication that we'll put around this video to do that. So Carl, this has been awesome, super valuable to people because understanding how to get approved for disability is not easy. So thank you, thank you for that, All right? You're welcome. Hopefully we'll have you back for some more informational segments. All for right. sure, <laughs> yeah.